Hello fellow Rosarians. I know that I've done a lot of videos and a lot of times I like to put it to music and just have a peaceful backdrop and let you watch at your leisure and pause it if you need to to see which rose you're looking at in bloom. But I did get a request from one of my friends on the Organic Rose Facebook page and I'll go ahead and link that down below in case you're interested in checking it out. I was asked to do a walkabout and talk about my experiences with each of the roses that are in my garden. So without further ado, let's start walking around and before the rain starts. I'm gonna do a, um, a video at the end of the season after I look at all of the fragrances and I smell them and look at the longevity of the blooms and the overall health. And you know I love my spreadsheets. So I'm gonna put together a spreadsheet to share with you on what, what we've got with all these roses. So I'm not gonna talk about scent right now unless it's one that I already know stands out. So for me, um, if I don't say anything about the scent, it's because it either ha it has a slight to very mild uh, fragrance. So looking at Bosco Bell, it looks so beautiful. I feel like I say that all the time because I love all of my roses. And if somebody were to ask me, what is your favorite rose? My answer is whatever one is in bloom, honestly. <laughs> this is Bosco Bell and I'm looking at him right now and there is no black spot. He's very healthy. Uh, the blooms are full. I'm just not seeing any issues. He's a rather upright shrub and right now I'm measuring him at about three foot by two and a half or so. This is Gentle Hermon. And this one, if you look at the habit of Bosca Bell compared to the Gentle Hermon, the blooms are nodding a little bit. And that's okay. I find that very sweet that every rose is a little bit different. If we look at Bliss Perfuma, she's more upright. So you see the difference between a nodding bloom um, and a very upright, this kind of reminds me more of Queen of Sweden, how it shoots up um, and puts its face up to the sky. So that one just makes it easier to smell. And if we look at this little tiny bloom, for me, this is, I don't know if it's because it's a younger rose. She's sweet, but it's only about two inches. Gentle Hermone, let's look for one that's older. This one is deep and cupped and I would say that it's three inches in size. I've got a beautiful spirea back there uh, from Proven Winners. I think that's called Double Doozy and I love that punch of color here in the bed. Okay so let's look down here. Janet had a problem with thrips early on in the season and I have been treating for those. Look how beautiful that is with the deep color in here. But she keeps her leaves. Do you see how they curl down on, on the um, outer petals? Um, but she is very healthy, very little black spot. You can see that I'm starting to get a few pieces that I need to come in here and clean up. Vanessa is so healthy and I can't say enough about her. If you look at these blooms, they are smaller. This bloom here is um, a little over two inches, but it hasn't gotten much bigger than this. But what I love is it has a yellow bloom that fades to white. So this would go into any flower arrangement that you have and just look like a perfect pairing. Very healthy, no black spot. I love the shape. Right now this is over three foot, I would say three and a half foot. Um, wide and three foot tall, just a very healthy rose. If we move down, this is the shepherdess. And I am really impressed with the shepherdess. She is um, a little over two inches on this bloom. It's cupped, very healthy, not one bit of black spot, but I'm not sure if you can take in the total size of this shrub. This is her second season might be her third and she is three three and a half foot by three foot wide so she is a striking rose that really has a presence in the garden now this is my husband's favorite rose i think that there is a rose for everybody and this one here is interesting it's crazy love and it starts with a very yellow center uh, with 
a pink outer edge, but if you look at what it grows into, it's just amazing the changes that roses can make through their bloom cycle. To me, this looks like a party. This needs to be on a table for a summer party that you're gonna have. So that's one of my husband's favorites. And this rose here, my mom gave me. Um, she did not like having to deal with black spot. And I can see that this little poor rose has it already and I'll be working on that. But it's, this is heritage from David Austin. A nice, it has a, a pink center. It gets lighter around the edges, but she it has found her way into my garden and I'm going to enjoy her black spot and all. Um, but she must be 20 years old now. This is Sour Emmanuel, and I see no black spot, and I love this purple dark kept, and then the uh, lighter center. I know that a lot of you might be familiar with Acropolis, and Acropolis is such an interesting rose because it just looks like an aged book to me. And I love how it has um, the washed color on the outer edge. And I thought that this would look so sweet in a flower arrangement, maybe with some whites or some creams, just because it's so muted and dainty in color. She's very healthy. This is her first year. And I would say that she's about 18 inches by 18 inches right now. This is Summer Sun, and Summer Sun is a very bright pink. When I first was looking at Summer Sun, I wanted something that was a coral or approaching that orangey color. And for me, she's very pink, uh, which is fine. She fits along with my a party that I've got going on with Crazy Love. <laughs> so she fits fine in this bed. And then this is Foxy Lady. And Foxy Lady, I love the ruffly blooms. And when she first starts blooming, it's a much deeper coral shade, approaching almost a, a rusty orange color. And so you know my love of Summer Song from David Austin. And so I'm thinking that that is the closest that I've come so far to finding something in that similar color range. Emily Bronte. This is an older bloom here, but Emily Bronte has a cute little button um, on her, and I got several blooms from her this season, and no black spot. Eglatine. I am so happy that she's doing well because I've tried multiple times to have her in my garden without success, and she is, the bloom is about three inches in size. There's no black spot. And she's a little baby, but look at all of those blooms. There must be um, 25 blooms on this little shrub. Look at this. Okay, I've got Heather Austin back here getting ready to bloom. There's no black spot there. Now this is Claire. This is a different variety than Claire Austin. Uh, and she is a very light pink. And look at that little center there. I am really happy with this shrub. So this might be an outdated uh, shrub that's more difficult for you to find, but if you can get your hands on her, um, she has done very well for us. Now this is heavily Rosalind, and I, I, I need to get a picture of her during the day for you because her little bloom is so sweet. Look at this little petal in here. And she just opens wide up, but when it's time for bed, at the end of the day, she closes up. And I have one more rose like that. And so I love the uniqueness of each of the roses and that they close up at night. Isn't that fun? And uh, yeah, I have one cane that's going crazy, but at least I know that she's happy and I can't wait to see how she does. Okay, let's head down here. This is English Garden. Now this is going to be a, um, an older variety that you may not be able to get. And um, you see that it, the buds start out a very light pink. 
and then they're going to grow into um, a creamy white, very full bloom. And I have no problems with this rose, no black spot, and I'm very happy. This is Polar Express, and it is just happy as can be, and I'm going to have 20 buds on that in the next couple of days. So down here I've got one more to share with you. Actually two. Okay, I've got Totteringly by Gently. And this is just like Heavily Rosalind, how it kind of closes up its blooms at night. Look at those little bugs in there. Um, I love this. So sweet. So maybe I'll put a flower arrangement together with Heavenly Rosalind and Toddling by Gently. But I just love the idea of a sweet summer bouquet with these very simple rose buds. And that's why I chose those too. This is St. Albans First Bloom. The rose bud, the bloom itself is probably over four inches um, in size, but this is a very healthy, happy rose. So I'm happy with St. Albans. My daylilies are gonna pop here in a couple of days. And my mother turned me on to daylilies many years ago. So it reminds me of her when I see them blooming in my garden. And I have lots of different colors. The first to always bloom will be Happy Returns. And that's this, um, the yellow color that you're seeing here right now. All of this yellow is going to be Happy Returns. I see one, one that's already opened up and can't wait to say hello down here. Isn't that pretty? Okay, let's head on up. Gosh, they were very inexpensive, like $4 each when I put them into the garden and they have just done so well. So if I see more of those little tiny canisters in the future, I will grab them. Oh, so this is what I wanted to show you um, with Walker's Low. So do you see how the shrub is, this one's gotta be five foot or so, um, but I want you to be aware that when you get closer, sometimes it kind of flops open and that's entirely normal but from a distance all the way back you don't really see that so i just want you to be aware that as you're making your decision if this is a, a good plant for you um, that it opens up like that okay so this is olivia i can't say enough about olivia she is the first to bloom for me every year uh, her blooms are so beautiful. They stay on the bush for a while. This is, this bloom is two, three and a half inches or so. Uh, maybe, yeah, a little over three. Um, but she is very healthy. I don't struggle with black spot. But do you see, she's very upright. Let me take a step back here so that you can take it all in. There we go. Um, so she is very upright and full. So I highly recommend Olivia. And I bet you wanna know who this baby is. And this is Sweet Mademoiselle. And what I wanna share with you about her blooms, not only is she super healthy, but look at this fun bloom. It is, um, when it starts, when the bloom starts, you're gonna have this coral color and it's very bright. And then as it ages, you get this where it is peachy with an outer, um, the outer petals are darker, darker pink. And then it goes to like a white, a white wash with those dark outer um, leaves. And let me get in and show you this older one here. Doesn't that just make you smile <laughs> it definitely makes me happy and the blooms are huge i mean this is i don't know if we measure this and this is definitely a five and a half approaching six inch bloom i mean it is magnificent so anyways enough about this but that is sweet mademoiselle and definitely need to consider adding that to your garden this is earth angel and for me, Arthur Angel is a very, very light, 
pink. Really, I would have to put her on the spectrum of white. And so when we look closer, you see a little pink inside, very deep cup. Look at this little tiny baby. This is so sweet. Can you imagine that in a flower arrangement? Um, so this little bud looks like it's about an inch, a little over an inch and a half. And so the largest bud that I have on here is aged out and this is a little over three but the average that you're going to get at least for me in zone 7b this looks like it's about um almost three inches there so very prolific if you look at all of the blooms that i'm going to be having here and it stays on the shrub for a while i don't have any black spot so i highly recommend earth angel uh, this would just be another rose for me being on the water that the gnats love because it is a very white color and here for us if you're going to have a party outside don't use <laughs> white tablecloths that's a psa <laughs> if you have white tablecloths you're going to have gnats all over your table okay this is wisely 2008 and it is the last blooms that i have for this flush and i guess he gave me about half a dozen or so so the jury's still out on that one, whether or not um, he is prolific enough for me, um, but still somebody that I'd like to have in my garden. In this bed, we've got my favorite May Night Salvia, Walker's Low, Peonies, and peonies are very short-lived for me. I get maybe a week's worth of bloom out of them. So I used to be a huge peony fan, but um, not so much anymore. Um, so this is something everybody needs to consider for their garden. It is milkweed and this is Cinderella from Proven Winners. I'm real excited to show you how it does over the summer and how all of the butterflies um, enjoy eating it. It is a very scarce looking plant and you have to stake it um, because it leans over. So that's what I've done here is kind of staked it upright so that it doesn't fall over, but very important to have for organic gardens. Onwick, very stingy, gave me one bloom and she did it while I was on vacation. So I didn't even get to see it. <laughs> so, this is Ferdinand Pilchard and I have had him, this is the third season now, and he just gave me his first blooms. Let's see if we can look at this. I love fun things like this where it's got some stripes and I picture putting a solid rose with him in a flower arrangement like maybe Munstead would, would look really pretty. Um, but I have Ferdinand Pilchard and he is, if you look at him, he's not a very full bush for me. Maybe it's because he's not very healthy and happy, but for me, I am lucky to have two canes and he's just very, very sparse. But I have him next to another striped rose. This is Sentimental. And in contrast to Ferdinand Pilchard, Sentimental is prolific. So if you are looking for a rose with that similar striping look to it, I would lean more towards Sentimental rather than Ferdinand Pilchard. Let's look in here at that little baby. This has a very muted color, and so it's very romantic looking and subtle, and this is Ebb Tide. And Ebb Tide is, is happy, um, but this is his first year, and that's why he's so small tucked in here. Munstead Wood is a very low rose. It has been here for, this might be his fourth year. He is not a very full shrub. He's about three foot um three foot but the majority of the rose bush is very low but look how pretty that is and that would look so pretty with that sentimental i just replaced this hedge here if you're wondering what happened to my beautiful hedge i did my video on clipping a hedge and after the video i said that's it it's coming out and so i have bought enough sprinter boxwoods now to lift those out in the coming days and so i will have sprinters here now i have sage in here um, by proven winners i think it's called denim blue 
And then I've got alliums, more peonies. And this is the first bloom of Violet's Pride. And it's got that rose colored center that they said that it would have that looked like a heart. I've got, this is my purple section. And Poseidon, look at this little beauty. <laughs> Poseidon really only bloomed for a couple of days and then I'm not sure if the heat was too much for him. So let's watch the next blooms before we write him off as being a difficult rose. Got peonies in here. This rose has been here for several years. We might be going on year four or five now. This is Queen of Sweden. You have very few roses here on the lower part. The majority of the growth is going to be up high. So this is great for somebody who has trouble with rabbits or deer will probably still be able to get up this high, but those low rodents that are getting into your shrubs, if that's your only issue, this could be a great rose for you. So I love that it just tucks into the tree here and it rests up against the tree. So I will probably buy another rose down to put a lower rose down in front of it. But I love Queen of Sweden and I've never had any problems no black spot and that very pure color of pink that I was looking for. I mean, look how bright that is. The camera probably doesn't catch it. Um, so here's another Olivia and I have her because she's my first bloomer every year. If we look down here, this entire section here is being lifted out um, every couple of days. I try to take out another shrub and move it. We're getting ready for a renovation and the excavator is going to need to be able to get to this section. But one of the companion plants that I want to share with you, it looks a little unwieldy here, but this is Gara. Do you see how tall it gets? But I think that if I were to put this behind that sprinter hedge, it's going to hold it upright, but it just looks like fairies in the wind. And that's one of the reasons why I like Gara. Do you see that? So beautiful. Okay, so let's head down here and look at one of my favorite hedges. When I first made this hedge on this side, when we first moved in, I had 35 Benjamin Britton. And as gardeners, we're constantly changing our ideas about what we'd like, and we're prone to move things. <laughs> and so I decided that it was, it was just boring having a whole hedge of Benjamin Britton, although I loved him. I found that I really wanted to use him as an accent plant on this row. So I've got Benjamin Britton's, and then I have um, my orange, my apricots and creams here. And the apricots that I have chosen, I'll show you, are all in a very similar family color. I've grouped them in threes, 18 inches apart, so that I have a very full look. And for me, it hasn't been an issue with overcrowding. Let's talk about why I love Benjamin. Um, he has cupped blooms, and you see how as he ages, it washes out almost white. Um, almost like he, the color has been washed away. I love this look and so many rosarians do where he has like this rust color bloom when he first opens up and here's a new bloom. And then as he ages, you can expect him to stay cupped, but let's go over here and look at this one. Um, see how it's just whitewash on the edges, isn't that fun? So anyways, all right, um, so this is at last from Proven Winners, and we just had a rain, so I don't know if that's why uh, it's closing up, or, um, but you see this color. This rose is going to be beautiful. I have a little bit of black spot, but nothing that I'm too overly concerned about. Okay, this is another Vanessa Bell that we've talked about. This is Abraham Darby. And Abraham was absolutely stunning this year. This is one of the most fragrant roses that you can have. Uh, I'm really happy with him. I will always have more, but he is prone to black spot uh, where I am. And I can see that a lot of his leaves have defoliated and he needs to be cleaned up. <clears throat> okay, another Benjamin Britton. 
parting mill has been really a beautiful rose and I'm looking and I'm not seeing any black spot on this rose. The color is so striking. It is just breathtaking. So I am very happy with Carding Mill. Highly recommend. Uh, this is Winchester Cathedral. And Winchester Cathedral, for me, it keeps on showing pink in the roses, which is interesting. And somebody's telling me that it's a sport. But this is what the true rose is intended to look like. Very white pure. And then this is mine. Um, so I've had several of these now where it has a lighter pink edge on it. Um, all in all, I'm very happy with this set. There's no black spot and they are very, very happy roses. Now this is an amazing rose and I'm telling you, I could take a chair and come out here and just stare at this rose. David Austin rose lovers are not going to be familiar with this rose and that's why I want to share it with you. This is Sonnenwelt and Sonnenwelt um, is just breathtaking. It's huge and when you look at these blooms it has, if you look at the outer petals, this pink on the outer petals, this rose color that goes along with what these new buds look like. And look at these ruffled blooms. I mean, it just takes my breath away. I'm serious. When I walk up to this rose, I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, and the whole bush, it, it is completely full. And I'll try to back up here to give you a really good look. I mean, I can't say enough about it. Everybody needs this rose and it's so healthy, no black spot. Okay, this is Princess Charlene de Monaco. And when I first fell in love with this rose, it was in California while I was visiting my daughter. And I loved it so much, I brought it on the plane with me home and it ended up costing me <laughs> probably the rose three times over just because I had to have it and I had to have it right then. And the petals are just iridescent pink with apricots and yellows in there. And it's a very healthy shrub. And so um, another highly recommend. I do see a little bit of black spot, but nothing that I'm overly concerned about. There's Benjamin. So this is Lark Ascending. And Lark Ascending is in that same family color as Sonnenwelt that I just shared with you. And so this is, if you look, it's got the hints of yellow and rose color and it's kind of iridescent. So for me, Lark Ascending is just a fun rose that is not overly full and cupped, but it's just dainty and sweet. And I just want to put it in uh, a vase for the summer. So we're going to ignore these Abervitae hedges because they are being replaced. We have a water issue that we're combating um, between our lots here with my neighbor. Um, let's see, this is William Morris and William Morris is very ha happy. I don't have any black spot that I'm dealing with and his rose petals are just so sweet and they open up to be even fuller cut, but this is approximately three inches or so. Um, but look how sweet. I'm really happy to have this one. And it looks like Soul Sister has just started to bloom. Soul Sister is in that apricot family and look how dark she is. Really pretty. Okay, we've got more Benjamins. And this rose is the rose that I think that every beginner needs that is venturing into David Austin roses. This is Lady of Shalott and look at all of the definition and the color in this rose. She is so healthy and she ends up be arching and getting so tall that I call her having octopus legs. Um, but she, the color is apricots and yellows and it just seems iridescent and ethereal and it just goes so well with everything else in this row of roses. And this is Desdemona, and they are happy and healthy. 
And let me show you, this rose is gonna stay cupped and pure white. And this is approximately two and a half inches or so. We've got all of my standards here that we're still waiting to bloom. Let's look at this nursery where I'm washing my very small band roses to make sure that they hold up okay. Uh, everybody needs this rose. Uh, this is Rosie the Riveter and I, I love this. If I could buy another one of these, I will because she has so many blooms and for a band to be blooming like crazy like this and the the rose but but it's this bloom is going to approach i don't know five inches it gets very very large i've got easy does it back here and it looks like the outer petals are um, approaching just a dark rust color this is Distant Drums that has been blooming nonstop since I got it. So we built these raised beds last year, I think. So all of the roses that I'm gonna share with you are on their first and second year. This is Princess Anne, and she opens up beautifully with ruffles, and it looks like her darker color is under here when she first opens up. When I look at some of these roses in this bed, they seem to have very light uh, coloring on their leaves and I was concerned, but I did just feed her with fish tone or fish fertilizer. So I'm thinking that I might have to update my plan to make sure that all of these roses and these beds, the raised beds are getting fish tone on a more regular basis, but we'll see. Um, this is Trade Scant and I love how he's got this dark color. Let's look at it. Dark color and so many blooms on each stem has five blooms. So I think that this bush is going to just be amazing in the future and full of blooms. This is a new addition, Ascot, and he's very upright, just like we talked about uh, Queen of Sweden. Looks like Ascot is going to be in the same family. Very upright, very ruffled full blooms, and a nice bright red. Very healthy, very healthy rose. Thomas Beckett. Um, this is Comte de Chabord little tiny rose it came to me tiny so we'll see if that one picks up this is port marion and this is an older variety that's very sweet and the blooms are three inches or so it opens up this is wife of bath very tiny blooms so i would say this is three inches or so on that bloom this is another one of my favorites and I didn't used to be a fan of red roses and I'm so glad I decided to do these beds um, but this is Prospero here look at that bloom it's crazy so initially I wanted this entire side to be red when I started adding the pinks in it I just really decided I need to break up the monotony La Ville de Bruxelles. So this is an interesting one that you may not have considered, but it's sold on the David Austin website. Look at that clematis. Isn't that crazy? I love how that clematis has just climbed on that tree. Um, this is the first bloom for Mill on the Floss. It's got a, a light colored center and outer pink. Really beautiful, very healthy. And then this is Bishop's Castle. Benjamin Britten. I think this is another rose bush that is prolific, that is not very known. And this is Barbara Austin. Now, when you get this rose, her blooms are tiny. They're two and a half inches or so, uh, maybe three in width, but on the smaller size. So if you don't mind having a rose bush with smaller blooms, I highly recommend Barbara Austin. Okay, more Benjamins, Scepter Isle, 
very pretty dainty rose and when I say dainty it's just not as packed full of petals and so this one is on the smaller side for me um, it's three inches maybe it'll grow as it ages and this is a lighter this one's about four inches I guess for scepter isle Harlow Carr his um, blooms are nodding and it's a smaller, not very deep um, cut and it's, it's probably about three inches. Empress Josephine is available on the David Austin website and it's ruffled and fun and it has darker ruffles in the middle. That one is a nice little rose. And Louis Odier has been blooming nonstop for me. Highly recommend him, but do you see his blooms are tiny. They are um, two inches or so, but to have a shrub that's blooming nonstop, I think it's totally worth it. And of course, it's something that you can just space out with your roses that maybe take a little bit longer to bloom. So this entire bed here on this side, uh, we're bringing in a couple of truckloads of dirt to bring it up because we have such a water issue. And these roses have been fine dealing with um, the water <laughs> that pools over here. This is Crocus Rose. And look how sweet this color is. It's like a, the lightest of apricot that you could get. Um, approaching white, cream, but very light and happy. Um, it's got a little bit of black spot and it is right now it's about three foot wide by three and a half tall tranquility has black spot um, but she's happy enough and look at these little ruffled petals here it looks like it's about three and a half inches This is Evelyn.